Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm quite excited to do the introduction today for reasons that I hope will become apparent. Um, but before I do, I talk about general things in the world, I'm going to talk about Nightfall by Playmaker6174, which is today's puzzle. This has a 100% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany, and apparently it is really rather wonderful. On Logic Masters Germany, it's rated four stars out of five, which suggests quite difficult. Um, but apparently it's closer to three stars, whatever that means. It, it could still be quite difficult, um, but it involves um, a novel rule, actually, that I've not seen before. So um, I'll read you the rules of this one in just a moment or two, but I'm sure we're in for a treat. Um, now, what do I need to tell you about first? Um, we're streaming. Uh, in a couple of days on Thursday evening, I think 10 o'clock UK time, we'd love to have your company. If you watched our last stream, you will know that that was an opportunity to watch Mark, well, fail to solve the Udacos puzzle that he attempted. Uh, I think he's going to be trying to put that right. And I am going to be trying to guess the names of setters. Um, the Sudoku Skunk Works have come up with a whole heap of puzzles for me to, to try to solve. Um, blind. Well, not, not just to solve blind, but solve and then identify the setter just from the solving experience, which I am anxious to have a go at. Um, so that's what we're going to be trying on Thursday evening. And we'd love to have your company if you have the time. Um, now, next thing I need to tell you about Kickstarter. Do check it out. This is our wonderful new book, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits Volume 2. Um, there's a link on the screen if you want to have a look at it uh, and we commend it to you and I'll try and put a link under the video as well. There aren't, we are running running down the days. So if you do want to get a copy, that is the only way to get a copy. So do have a look. Um, next, I need to read out the names of successful solvers of Duality, the monthly reward over on Patreon. So more names to come and there's going to be more names to come in the future videos do. Graham Nicholson, well done. Uh, Jarko Pajuniemi, oh, hang on, that's really hard for me to pronounce, sorry, Pajuniemi, 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 Jarko Pajuniemi, sorry, Jarko, um, uh, Robbie the Belgian, Debbie Fisher, Jamie Stearns, Ignacio Cascudo, Tobias and Nadine, Shui Wu, Stefan Winkle, Steve uh, Tradigio, David Cam, Sarah Driscoll, Lane the Pain Train, Spencer, Lane the Pain Train, Spencer, that's a good one, uh, James Barrett and Sean, Sean McKindo as well. Very well done, all of you. That's stupendous work. And you've still got a few days left to submit uh, an entry for our other competition over on Patreon, which is to solve and send a solution guide um, to Shy and Jovial's classic Sudoku, Another Language. Do check that out. Uh, I will tell you that we have received um, we've received a lovely entry recently that has caught the eye of, of the two setters, Jovial and Shy. Um, so if you are going to send a solution guide, make sure it's a good one. Um, now we're on to birthdays and announcements. So I'm going to start with Victoria over there from uh, Sonora, I think it is, in Mexico. Happy birthday, Victoria. Uh, and then from Natalie, you've turned 26 over in Germany, I think. Your uncle Uwe uh, wrote to us to tell us that you might appreciate a shout out. And then um, Jessica, happy second wedding anniversary to you from your husband, Eric. Um, and apparently the two of you watch my videos and try the puzzle in Mark's videos, which is a cool combination. Um, and I think Eric is turning his hand to Sudoku or puzzle setting and has set you, Jessica, a special puzzle to celebrate your anniversary, which sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, he says he sets the puzzles, you're, but you're going to make the cake. And that's definitely the best way around, apparently. So I wish you the best as well today. And finally, um, I'm going to read I'm going to read you out a lot of this this email because I think it merits it. And I'm. I'm just concerned if I don't, this might be a serious email and I should have done. So I'm taking it seriously, Kirsten. But I want to say, um, well, I want to wish Bernard, uh, who's turned 38 today, a very happy birthday. Um, 
and Kirsten wrote us a quite incredible email in which she, she says, you, you might ask yourself why you should wish him a happy birthday and I would like to explain. First of all, my boyfriend is a committed and hardworking dad of two, almost three, uh, and an extraordinary boyfriend. He devotes his time to his family, his work, and dot, 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 to Simon. <laughs> I hear Simon's and also Mark's voices daily. Uh, most of the day st starts in the early morning behind the closed bathroom door while he's in the shower and Simon or Mark is talking to him. And then it ends with the four of us in bed together, sometimes waking me up in the middle of the night. Thanks for that, by the way. Uh, he probably defines himself as by being a fan of your channel uh, and especially your riddles. I hope that's enough reason for congratulating him on his birthday. If not, I would prefer not to know how much more of a geek he needs to be to achieve this honour. Well, he has definitely achieved the honour. Anyway, Kirsten goes on to say, um, and maybe you could add that I would really like to marry him if he would be up for a challenge. Um, so, uh, Bernard, um, happy 38th birthday. Congratulations on receiving a proposal. I presume you've received this proposal or discussed it in real life as well. If not... Um, well, I'm delighted to bring the, be the bearer of this, of the question, and I hope to goodness that you say yes. Um, we would love to know. Please let us know. We will be on tenterhooks until that time. Um, but anyway, to all, all the birthdays and all the anniversaries today, I hope you have an absolutely stupendous day full of cake, of course. Now, with that excitement out of the way, let's have a look at Nightfall by Playmaker6174 and see what we've got to do. I've just realized I've got the wrong glasses on. That means I can't see properly. Um, that's not probably going to help me solve the Sudoku. So let me switch glasses. There we go. Um, right, wait a moment until I can see. I can sort of see. Um, and let's get on with reading the rules of the puzzle. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent cells on a green line must contain digits that have a difference of at least five. So these are so-called German whisper lines. So if that cell was a two, that cell would have to be five different from two at least. So it'd have to be seven, eight, or nine. And then this digit, that much, let's imagine this was nine, this would have to be uh, four, three, two, or one. Well, it couldn't be two because we'd already got the two here. So one, three, or four would be the options for this cell to keep these two um, five apart at least. So that's how green lines work. Now, adjacent cells on an orange line must contain digits that have a difference of at most two. Note that due to its nature, digits can repeat along an orange line if allowed by other rules. Now, that is a deeply, deeply suspicious <laughs> part of the rules that I read in that sentence. And that's because if I stare at this grid for just a scintilla of time, I can see it's quite impossible for digits to repeat along orange lines, except in one place, which is here. Uh, I think that's right. Anyway, every other orange line is in a box. But those two can't repeat because they wouldn't... Oh, the difference of at most two? No, they can. Oh, I see. So they might have no difference at all. So those two digits might be the same. That That is what that part of the rule is telling us, which is interesting in the extreme and I'm very suspicious that that means those two digits are going to be the same in the finished grid. We shall see in the fullness of time whether that turns out to be true. Um, digits on the grey line have an equal sum n within each box it passes through and then it specifies exactly what that means. It says i.e. row 3 column 5 plus row 3 column 6. So those two digits Oh, look, I've got, I'm, I need to talk to you about colours as well. I'm going to do that in a moment. Some of you got cross with me for my colours yesterday. Row four, column four, row five, column four, row six, column four. So those three digits sum to the same as these two digits, uh, sum to the same as those two digits, sum to the same as those three digits. So there is a sort of mathematical relationship being specified by, I've just noticed it's a moon, isn't it? By the moon here. So, um, that's why the puzzle's called Nightfall. Finally, I'm catching up. Uh, but that's very nice indeed. So we've got that going on on the grey line. We've got some funny things going on with the orange and the green lines. Um, and do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play 
let's get cracking. Um, now, let's get cracking. We get a given digit today, which is a five. Oh, which probably means I need to talk about German Whisper Secrets, do I? Is that... Well, it's going to be at least probably relevant, so let's do it. Uh, oh, and now colours. Yes, I got distracted. I want to talk about colours because I discovered not only did I use colours that were I couldn't detect the difference of in yesterday's solve of the chromatic octagon, um, but Sven wrote me a note last night to say you can actually now specify your own colours in the, in the palette, and the way you do that is you you click on the colour button and then you just hold down the mouse over a colour button and you'll see if you do that it changes it sort of has a then has a white background and then if you click on it again you can literally look change the colour altogether isn't this amazing and then it remembers what you've done so um this is re really cool and then then you can just hold down the button again to get rid of it so i have now i've now specified a sort of a palette that I really like the look of um, with some greens sorry greens oh, I can have to do it this way greens I've got this darker blue which I'm really I really I'm a fan of browns anyway this is all by the by it's not really important to solving the puzzle but it just shows this amazing software that Sven's Sven's created do support Sven by the way that you can get the software it's called Sudoku pad and there's a link hopefully if I remember on the screen right now Anyway, let's talk about the secrets of German whispers. Um, because of the, the rule that digits, adjacent digits on a green line have to be at least five apart, can you ever put a five on a German whispers line? That's the key insight. And the answer is no. Because if you try and put a five on a German whispers line, the dig next digit, if we go higher, we've got to go to 10 or more. And if we go lower, we've got to go to zero or negative and they don't work. They're not valid Sudoku digits. So that means that every digit we do place on a green line can be thought of either as being a lower than five digit, a one, two, three, or a four, or a higher than five digit, a six, seven, eight, or nine. And the interesting thing is that, that leads to something we call the oscillating polarity principle, because let's imagine this was high, a higher than five digit, we could then immediately say that the digits in the adjacent cells on the green line have to be lower than five digits because they have to be at least five different from any of these numbers. And you can see even if we pick the nine and we say that the digit next digit is only exactly five different from nine, we still flip the other side of the five and we get to four. So as we alternate along a green line, we have to make sure that we alternate alternate polarity and that's often important now why have we been given a five yes okay the reason looks like it might be because now five in box two has to be in one of those three cells now on the orange lines these were close together numbers weren't they yes the difference is at most two so So there's no reason at all this can't be a five, unless I'm missing a trick. Right, so five's up there in box number one. Um, five, five is a bit restricted in, uh, in box nine. I was about to say it's similarly restricted in box seven because we've got these two shapes that are sort of upside down irons. Oh no, I tell you what that reminds me of. That, that, thing in Star Wars the one is it the Jawas who sell stuff from from a ship or a vehicle that looks like that I think it is so this is a Star Wars vehicle and this is another Star Wars vehicle and that's another Star Wars vehicle except that one's had an accident well that, yes it really has had an accident oh no actually that one's different as well that's a that's the same shape but different colors look there's a green line across the top of that one where there's an orange line across the top of these two right uh, okay so this one is more constrained than this one is 
And the reason for that is oscillating polarity. Those two digits there have the same polarity in terms of the green line, i.e. if they were low, they would be selectable from 1, 2, 3 and 4. And that sort of makes sense when you think about the orange line connecting them. Because the, I'm, all I'm thinking about the orange line at the moment, and I don't know if this is right or not, but basically the orange line is saying digits are very close together. So it's a bit renban y but almost implying an order as well, isn't it? So if this was a 1, this would have to be a 2 or a 3. This would have to be then no bigger than 5, which it couldn't be. Whereas here it's very different because these two digits are from different polarity in terms of the green line and they can't be miles apart in terms of the orange line because we've only got one digit to connect the two of them. So if that was say, say that was low and was as high as it could be, it would then be a four and this was high but was as low as it could be, it would be a six. And then we'd have to connect the two we, we, oh, with five, which we can't have. Right, that's very interesting then. This line is, this line is constrained. And that's because this digit needs to connect digits of different polarity, i.e. it's got to connect something that's say from one, two, three, four to something that's higher than five, six, seven, eight or nine. I don't know which way round it's going to go, but it can't itself be five, which is the most natural way of connecting a digit lower than five with a digit higher than five. So, so it has to be four or six, doesn't it? Because if it's not four or six, it cannot connect two digits from alternating polarity, given we've got, we're only allowed to jump two for each in each case so for example if this was if this was three i mean it's just not going to work it's not going to work at all let's say that's four this has to be six at least and that's three away from three not two away from three that's never going to work so this is four or six um now what does that mean The answer is, I don't know. Does one of these also have to be four or six? Or is that, that's sort of, that's what my gut reaction is. But that might not be true. So if that was three, then this could be four. And this could be six, actually. No, so that's not, uh, oh no, but then that's, yes, okay, that is true. It is true, isn't it? One of these does have to be four or six, I think. Oh, yeah. The way the way to think about this simply, and this is a bit of a strange strange one, but it, how how would there not be a six in one of these? Given we can't put five on a green line, so if, if neither of these was four or six, the only way of making this connection work would be with three, seven, and that requires a five in between in order to, to stop the orange line being broken, and that can't be five. Yes, all right. So there is definitely a four or a six in one of these two cells, and that is interesting because four and six are the most restricted numbers on green lines because they have to be next to, if this was a four, this would have to be a nine. If this was a six, it would have to be a one to be five away. So one of these digits is a one or a nine. Ooh which I don't know if I want to actually pencil mark. Um, so do I want to use some shading to tell me? Probably I do. Let's do purple. Oh, that's a bit garish, actually. Let's do uh, brown. No, I don't like the brown against the, the orange. Um, so even with my new colours, I'm struggling to find things I really want to do. Let's do that and dark blue. No, actually, I think maybe I'm going to do without shading. It's all, it's all a bit clashy with the greens and the oranges. Oh, but hang on. 
ah ah this is lovely right so now how do I make that one work because I've got ex yes the, the, on this um, Star Wars vehicle I've got exactly the same problem I had on this one except now I'm not allowed to use four and six at all on this orange string and yet I've still got to collect connect uh, digits of different polarity so the only way I'm going so this must be three five seven it's the only way it can possibly work so that's a five that's lovely so that's a five that's not a five this is a three seven pair Um, okay, so if this was three, this would have to be eight or nine. If this was seven, this would have to be one or two. So these are from one, two, eight, and nine on, on the whispers, depending on which way around these go. Five is not, so five's in one of three places in box nine, but I think that's what we already had. Um, okay, sorry, I'm not, I know, oh yes, hang on, I know one of these is a four or six, so one of these is a one or a nine, but actually I don't need to have ones and nines on here, threes and sevens you could get away with, you could get, you could get away with twos and eights on the line down there so that's okay that's that's perhaps not that interesting these gray lines on the on the moon here have to be one two eight nine that's interesting Oh, that's lovely, actually. Oh, <laughs> that is very, very nice. Oh, that is stunning. That is stunning. Okay, right. I know what this is. I love that. That is absolutely beautiful. It's almost like Playmaker has spotted this, this pattern and designed this whole puzzle around trying to force these digits onto, the, onto here. Because this is so cute. So you, c you can actually say, I don't know what the order is of these two digits, but I do know exactly what those digits are now. Um, so if you can see why, fantastic. If you can't, pause the video and see if you can work it out. For those of you that managed to do it, congratulations. Um, but let's, let's think about the options for these two cells. Now, can they both be low? No, because if this was a one, two pair, they would add up to three. And we'd be saying that those three need to add up to three. Those three add up to three. That's clearly absolutely ludicrous. What about if this was eight, nine? That's harder to see why that fails. But it's still forced. I mean, apart from the fact, I suppose it would give you a deadly pattern. Um, but putting that to one side, it still doesn't work. Because if these add up to 17, the only way to make these add up to 17 is with seven, with putting eight and nine up there. But now this would have to be zero, eight and nine. <laughs> because I, I need them to add up to 17, including an eight and a nine, which would have to be in these three cells by Sudoku. So this would have to go something like eight, nine, zero, which is not gonna work. So we reach the point where this contains a low digit and a high digit. That's interesting, because what's the minimum sum of those six cells? Well, the triangular number for six, i.e. what's one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 21. So how could this add up to 10? If this adds up to 10, this would add up to 10. This would add up to 10. That's 20. That's not 21. There is a knowledge bomb. 20 is less than 21. So the only way that this can work is if this is actually 11. So it has to be a two nine pair. And that means that these cells add up to 22. That one's going to add up to 11. That one's going to add up to 11. And if these add up to 22 in six cells, I know what they are. They're one, two, three, four, five, and seven. That's the only way to make six cells add up to 22, which means these, oh, so I do know the order of these. So this is six, eight, nine, by the power of what's left over after you've put one, two, three, four, five, and seven onto the line. 
and therefore that's 9 and that's 2 um, okie dokie and for our next trick we will say that oh, hang on what else can we do here then we can say right okay we can use this line again where does one go on this line because remember there's a four six pair on this line so it can't uh, but this is an orange line so we can't connect four or six to one because we have to be within two each time so i think one is only there which means one is not here so one is on this little stretch of digits we're getting a bit cluttered with our pencil marking and we need to make these add up to 11 so we need one and then two digits that add up to 10 which have to be seven and three right so that is one three seven and that is therefore two four five and two four five do add up to 11 so that's nice these have to add up to 11 and they're not five six and then okay and they're not two nine because neither of them can be nine so one of them if one of them's an eight, it's this one, and that would be a three. And if one of them's a seven, it's that one, and that would be a four. So these are very restricted now. That's not a five um, by Sudoku. Two has to be in one of those cells by Sudoku. Nine has to be in one of these cells. One has to be in one of these cells. Okay. And now, ah, so now I know what these digits are. Look, the, oh, these are, yeah, this is, okay, this is good. These digits by Sudoku now are four, six, and eight. But this one has to be the middle one because we have to, we have to make sure we obey both sides. So if we made that eight, obviously the four is now not within two of the eight. So we're going to have to put the middle digit in there. So we get a four and an eight here, which means one of these has to be a nine um, because the four, whichever one of these is a four, the only dig Sudoku digit that's five away from four, from four is nine. So these are not nine anymore. So these are one, two and eight. And the digit that's the digit that's going to be next to the eight in one of these cells is going to have to be a low digit. And that's going to be a one, two or a three. So these cells are from one, two, three, and nine. Okay. Which is very good, but doesn't seem to have finished the puzzle for us, does it? And all we've got there, we've got this big funny looking thing. It's like a backward Euro sign. Um, but that could just be, I mean, that could be a one, two, three, four, five line. One, two, that would make that a three. Or it could, it could be a nine, eight, seven, six, five line. Um, or I suppose it could be a one, three, five, seven, nine line. Yeah, that's probably, one, oh no, that puts five on the whisper. Okay, no, it's not going to be a one, three, five, seven, nine line. It's another of these puzzles where it's really weird in that when you get stuck, I don't know where to look. I don't have good intuition for these orange lines yet. These are the same polarity, aren't they? Um... These are the same. These are the same polarity, and then these digits. Oh, but we can't use. Oh, ah, ah, right. Okay. This is weird, but I think it's true to say that these four digits are all either all high, or they're all low. 
Now let me explain why I think that's the case and let's see if you guys agree with me. So let, in fact, let's make those gray. So these are clearly the same polarity because they are alternating on the whispers line. So if this was low, this would definitely be low. But all of these digits are connected along an orange line. So the only way of connecting a digit a low digit say to a high digit along an orange line if you can't use five which you can't is going to be to connect four and six on the line but once you've connected four and six on the line there's no way to get back down to four again you could go you could go four six but how do we get this now down again we could, the only way we can do it is connecting six to four we can't connect six to three um, so it's impossible. Once you go, once you break the boundary between the four and the six, you can't get back again if five isn't available. It's really cool. It's very interesting. But that means that these digits all, have all got to be the same polarity look, which means, oh, this is going to be it then. So those digits are all the same polarity. No, I shouldn't have used dark blue. It's a bit too dark, isn't it? Let's use... Um, I've got all these extra colours and I still can't decide what to do. I'm going to use yellow. Am I yellow or brown? I'll use yellow. Um, so these these are all the same as well, but we don't. So either yellow is six, seven, eight, nine, which why doesn't that work? Or it's one, two, three, four, and we can ask the same question. Why doesn't that work? The answer, I'm afraid, might as well be blowing in the wind because I don't know what it is. Um, no, sorry, I've got nothing. I, I suspect there is a very clean way of... This feels like the next step in the puzzle, doesn't it? It definitely feels like this is being designed to be very clever like this. And unfortunately, my little old brain is not clever enough to figure out how to, to disambiguate this. That's really annoying. Um, so maybe it's this one then. That digit, if that's a high digit, it has to be seven. If that's a low digit, it has to be, oh, okay, right. Actually, maybe this line is more under pressure than I'd realized because this digit is either, it's either low and if it's low, it's three or it's high and then it's got low, a panoply of options. This could, it could be anything, I think. Oh, it couldn't be six because one seems to have to be over here. So this is either three seven eight or nine i think now if it is three that has to be eight because we need a digit that's five away from three and nine doesn't seem to be available so if that's three that's eight but but if that's three that is not high because it must have the same polarity so if that's three, that is one or three. Because it couldn't be two and it couldn't be four because this would have to be eight and couldn't be nine. So if this is three, the world is an interesting place. But unfortunately, probably not an impossible place. Three. Well, you're forcing this to be four, seven then, aren't you? That's the other thing I can see you're doing. If that's three and that's eight, this cannot be a three, eight pair. This has to be four, seven, three, eight. Uh, 
I don't know. It might break, but I can't quite see why. All right, let's try it the other way around then. If this if this is not three, then this is a high digit, but that makes this a high digit, which has to be a seven in that case, because six, eight, and nine are not available. So if this is high, so if this is high, it's not seven. That's impossible. It cannot be seven. If it's high, it's eight or nine. This is seven, and this now couldn't be one or three. It can't be four because four is too close to seven. So that would be a two. Which can pair off very naturally with either eight or nine. This is getting very, very congested though. It's really, it's very interesting this. I have a feeling once one of these is ruled out by something. Ah, I've got it. I'm just checking I've done it before I'm going to be too proud of myself here. Ah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's actually beautiful. Okay, I should have got this more quickly, but I think I've, I've approached it completely uh, the wrong way round. But if this is seven, the point here is this digit becomes impossible, I believe, because if that's seven, we know this has to be low, but it can't be one or three and it can't be four, it's too close, so it becomes two. But now what on earth do we put in this digit? Now it has to be within two of two, but it can't be one or four, and it can't be three because this is gonna be a three if this is a seven because of what we did earlier. So what we've now learnt, is that this is not a high digit. So we now know the polarity of what's going on in this box. These are both low digits, so that one is a three. And if that one's a three, that is an eight. And if that's an eight, that's a four and that's a seven, aha. And now what is this digit then? So this digit is now, uh, I, well, it's only, the only low digit available is one. So that is a one. So this digit is, oh, that's, ah, <laughs> so now yellow, I know the nature of yellow, because this digit has to be low, because it's got to be within two of this. In, in fact, oh, yes, and remember what we looked at, at the start, I thought these were going to be the same, didn't I? So, but anyway, those digits are now one, two, three, and four. These digits are now six, seven, eight, oh, whoopsie, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, that can't be one, that is true to say. That can't be four because that is too far away from one. That can't be four because that would require double nine above and below it on the German whisper. So this, there is a, uh, so there is a four in this string of digits and I can see immediately why that matters because that's fixing this as an eight. This is a four. Now we know the four must be next to a nine on its whisper. So this becomes one, two or three. These are not nine. This, these are not eight. This is not seven. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, that's, oh that, well, no, okay, that's not four either, I've just noticed. So the four gets placed up here. This being six or seven prevents this being three. Three would be too close to six or seven. So the three is in one of these two positions. It's going to be here because this is going to be a one. <laughs> um, okay. Can we do any better than that? That's my next question. I don't know the answer to that, but I can now write two in here, look, by the power of Sudoku, which means that must be a five by, oh, oh, oh no, okay. It's all gone wrong. Because by Sudoku, this has to be a two, which means this is a two, this is a one, and this is a three, and now these are not the same. They could have been the same. It's almost like Playmaker is, hmm, he's playing a prank on us, I think. Okay, so now, what does that mean? Does that mean anything useful? 
So that bit of in the rules absolutely specifying that these could be the same number was just to delay us. Um, what are those two digits now? Oh, nine can't. Oh no, nine can't. It's not whispers. It's opposite of whispers. These can be close together. Oh, so these are six and nine. And actually we have no way of knowing the order. Six is within two of eight. Nine is in within two of eight. Ah, but this, this column now then. So this is a seven, eight pair. This is a five, six pair. And this is a three, four pair. And the correct response to that is bobbins because that doesn't seem to be resolved. Hmm. Oh dear. Uh, oh dear. Okay. I don't know what to do. What, what has this, has this done something really clever? I'm sure it has, but I'm, I just can't see what it is. No, I've got nothing. I've got nothing here. Um, okay, we better start pencil marking then. So those are fours in one of those cells. These are ones. There's a two up here. Well, I don't know why I typed three. There's a three down here. These are different. Right, okay, so maybe it's this sort of thing again. If that's four, look, which is the only low digit it could be, this would be nine. No, ah, that's it. Right, that is it. That's lovely. It's weird how powerful the interaction of this tiny little line is with the numbers. So if we do put a four here, because this has to be nine by whisper logic, now the lowest this could possibly be would be a five if we went seven, five. But this has become a 1-3 pair by Sudoku. So it's definitely not able to be that high. And that tells us that this is not 4. And if this is not 4, we know it's high, it's high in terms of whisper polarity. So it's 6, 7, 8 or 9. Which means we know this is low and therefore it's not brilliant, but it's 1 or 3. Um, now, what does that do then? So this, this digit's interesting, I think. Because that has to be within, well, the f the highest this digit could be would be five, and it can't be five. It has to, be, it literally has to be four. It's the only digit that's available from the panoply of digits one, two, three, four, and five. So that's a four, which can't be next to one because that's too far away. So that is three, which means this digit now can't be six or seven. So that's now become eight or nine. The three, oh, it's lovely. This is real, this is why this is a 100% rated puzzle. It's just because it is lovely. It's so, so clever. Now, this digit is now high. I can see that. I don't think we know much more than that, but that digit has to be within two of four. So it's either two itself, which it can't be. So it's got to be higher and it can't be five, so I think that can only be six, which makes this one, this nine, this six, this little digit, an eight in the corner. This is now not six, look. Um, this is not six. So this has got to be two away from eight, which it's always going to be. I was wondering if there's some sort of order here that we can, if you put nine there, yeah, if you put nine here, it's going to be next to six and that's not gonna work in terms of the line logic. So that's got to be nine. That's got to now be seven and that's six in the corner. No song for you. That's eight, that's seven. These digits now, I don't know exactly what they are. They're, well, I do know exactly what they are, two, five, and nine. I don't think I know the order of them. So let's double check. Now this is removing eight from here. Okay, which we could have done once we knew this was a seven because it has to be five different. 
So this is high and that is 8. Ooh, which means that's 8 and that's 7. Which means there's a 7 in one... Uh, oh, I was about to get excited. I thought the 5s and the 7s might be overlapping. But I've got 5s, look, pencil marked into 3 positions somewhat carelessly. Um, no. Okay. Is it the backward euro line or is it what's going on in this box? The double V lines. Who knows? I haven't got really a good sense for which I think is more likely. Can we... I don't know. I mean, we've got nothing in this middle box. Really, really nothing. Eight is in is on a line in this box. Now, is that somehow the point? Oh, four. Okay, four is on the line as well. Ah, ah. Oh, that's it. Right. This is it. So four is not here because that would have to be a nine by whisper logic. So four is forced onto the orange line. Actually, I was about to say that's it, but it's not really it, is it? Because four is quite a middly number. And four... Okay, all right, try this then. If the eight was not here in this box. This would be a 4-8 pair, and the only way of connecting them along the orange line would be to put a 6 here, which we cannot do. That's gorgeous. So this is 8. That's not 8. This is a low digit, which is a 2 or a 3. I'm expecting that to do something. <laughs> Foolishly, it turns out. Um, what? Two or three here. So these, both of these digits have to be close-ish to two or three. So the maximum they could be, oh, they can't be five. Okay, so these digits are under pressure. So... They have to be from one, two, three, and four. Which actually I could have seen just by doing Sudoku on the column. Uh, that's that. That's a not. That's a nonsense conclusion I've just reached there. So sorry. I am sorry for being a nonsense. Okay, but these two digits now can't both be or can they could they be from one two three four and five? Oh no they can't because of this no the, what about if they were one and five that probably is what they are one and five here the five would go with the four the one could go with two or three and everything would work okay and that would mean so what does that mean with this column then? Six, eight, and nine. Oh, a simple, much simpler question. Where does nine go in this box? Nine can't go on the line because it's not within two of either of these two options. So nine goes there, which makes that a six, look. So what's that done? Right, well, that's put, that's put six onto the line. which might be important. <laughs> it says trying to work out why that matters. If six is on the line, it could be next to four, couldn't it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, I know. Okay, I think now the idea, presumably, is that we jump back over there. 
because look these two have the same polarity because whatever this is if this was low both of these would be high and they can't both be high because they'd have to both be seven so what we've now established is that this digit is is a high digit and it can't be six or eight so that is seven or nine which means both of these two digits are low neither can oh no one of them could be four because that's that's okay with nine that can't be four by sudoku okay that can't be three that's going to be beautiful for some reason i can't understand oh look we're so close to a triple or a quadruple or even a quintuple in the row um yeah oh no simple where does seven go in this row because it doesn't seem to be able to go there so it has to go there so that digit is one two is two four or five only which is probably important for the following reason he says desperately trying to work out what that reason is uh, i was about to say these have to both be high now but this is an orange line which is quite quite different okay this orange line the maximum value of these digits is seven now the minimum value is one do i literally have to pencil mark the options to understand this i might have to i really don't like doing this but I think it's probably the safest way of doing it. That can't be one or three or seven itself, look. So, golly gosh, is there something I meant to? Oh yeah, okay, so the question is, that can't be eight. So that's become an eight by Sudoku. So that's eight, that's nine. That's seven, which must be next to us. It's so smooth. Once you see the next point, it's a classic playmaker. Once you see the next point, it sort of flows. This has to be next to one, two on the whisper. So that knocks out all sorts of gubbins from all of those cells. That's become a three out of absolutely nowhere. Three must be, oh, three works with both four and five. This is no longer able to be two. So this is a four, five pair. This has become a three. So these can't be three. And, oh no, they can be anything else. Um, what's that done then? Has that done some magic? Yeah, three and one. We can keep going with magic that way. That's not a one. There's a one on the line, look, in one of these two positions. That can't go with six. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. So we're at, whichever one of these is one, and one of them is one, it can't go with six on the line because it's too far away from it. So the six must go up there, which means that must be four now, can't be two. So these are not four. That's not four. So where does five go? Five can't go here now because it is not close enough to one or two. So five is in one of those two positions. That's not five. This has to be, this has to be a one, two pair, doesn't it? That's the only, only because three and four are not available. That's the two. So that's two, that's one. This is a five, seven pair, which I can now do the order of. That's not five or, or two. So four, five, two go in, four goes here, that's five. This is where it gets terrifying because if I've made an error, it's about to become very stark, isn't it? That's six. I've got a one, two pair in this column, so that's not two at the top. I've got a five here. So this column needs twos, sixes and nines, and that's not nine. Uh, this oh that nine there seems to make that cell a five. Oh, which doesn't resolve these Okay, but I can get the digit in the corner. It's a four. No song for you again. That's a four. That's a three That's a three. That's a one So one seems to have to go there and there and that becomes a two 
So this column, well, this cell is a two or a nine. Uh, all right, let's get that digit, and that's that's not a that's not a good digit either, is it? From a song perspective, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's a five. That's a five. That's a six. That's a two. That's a nine. That's a six. And in the corner, we get a two, and we get a two and a nine up there. What a beautiful puzzle that is! Stunning, stunning, and original, and correct. <laughs> wow, what an addition, eh? Might have started it with a marriage proposal, not sure. And we finished it with an absolute belter of a Sudoku Nightfall by Playmaker6174. A joy from start to finish with original logic galore around whispers and whatever, whatever name we're going to give these orange lines, sort of, I don't know, neighborly lines or something, aren't they? Because you've got to be quite close to, you've got to be quite close to your neighbor along the line. You can't be too distant. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comments. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.